shortage of black actuaries in South Africa remains a, cru a crucial subject as the demand for actual professionals continues to grow at a rapid pace. According to the University of Pretoria, South Africa has approximately 1,100 practicing actuaries, actuaries and 2,000 actual students who have already completed their undergraduate studies and that falls to just under 500 women, especially black women. Now we speak to one of them. Memory Izimba, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I mean, I look at your, you know, just your profile and one has to, you know, just be with pride. We know that at this particular course, actual science is still very male dominated. So briefly talk to us about what informed your career choice. I reckon there's a segment of women, particularly those that do like subjects like mathematics and so on, where you don't even think about the gender gap before you even make that choice. So my choice in choosing actuary science was simply because I enjoyed mathematics. And when my friend made me aware of actuary science, where the smartest people uh, attempted, I thought, let me prove that I'm smart. The, the, the gender element on the decision making, I think, um, had not yet uh, resonated with me at the time. So my decision was simply based on my trying to prove myself to myself. Mm. You know, there's still so many people who think that, uh, especially black young women, do not enjoy subjects like math and science, but you certainly do. And you wanted to enter into this field to prove just that point. You know, very briefly, just talk to us about what exactly does this degree of actuarial science entail? So one of the most exciting things about um, the degree itself is that it exposes you to every single skill set you're going to need from a business perspective to operate as a business uh, person. So I believe that an actuary is a business person who knows mathematics, whereas uh, the majority of people regardless of mathematicians or statisticians. So really you get a well-rounded education from economics to accounting, finance, and so on. So we are quite strategically well um, skilled to be able to operate in any business sector, including, um, including construction, for example, which uh, in recent years, um, chartered enterprise risk actuaries have been uh, getting involved in. Mm. Now, not only were you one of the few women to actually break into this particular field, you've recently been acknowledged in your role and honored with some awards. What are some of the challenges you've encountered in your journey as an actuarial scientist? So I think one of the biggest ones is the self-awareness of what's happening around me. When I became the chair of the Actuary Women's Committee, that was for the very first time when I had to, had to ask myself to say, as a profession, are we doing enough uh, in terms of transformation? Because I think one of the, the biggest um, issues is that when people think transformation, they think race, they don't necessarily think about gender, sexual orientation and the rest of it. So I think the fact that we are low in number as women within the profession and then when you come to race, um, it's even worse. Um, means that it's very difficult for one to have somebody to identify with. I think part of the reason I joined the Actual Women's Committee is to start a mentorship program because at the time, and my mentor was very uh, helpful through the Association of South African Black Actual Professionals in terms of assisting me into getting the field and getting comfortable within the actual profession, I found it very difficult to relate to him. So I think part of the challenges as faced in other professions is that even when you do enter the workplace, for example, um, people will be conservative in terms of mentoring you because while a, a guy, two guys can be having drinks from a work perspective, as a woman, other connotations start coming in. So quite, quite early on in my career, I was uh, privilege in that people would say to me, some of these things are happening, not because people don't want to help you, but because of the fact that societal connotations and biases then come in. Um, but I must say from an actual profession's perspective, in the past two years, the profession has really been, been consciously trying to ensure that when we think transformation, it's not just from a race perspective, but from a gender perspective, because we are part of a society. And until the societal 
um, underlying uh, causes are addressed, an actuary and accountant is not going to be exempt from the unconscious and conscious biases that people have uh, on the basis of gender. And, you know, one of the things that I found is uh, it's very difficult for especially women to come into a, a field that's, that's really not fair game, that's really not balanced, where you then need to not only prove yourself as, as a professional, uh, but also as, as a leader. Now, let's talk about something else that, um, you know, we've been hearing consistently. Uh, interestingly, last year, KPMG released its 2020 edition of the Advancing the Future of Women in Business, and it found that 75% of executive women identified having experienced the imposter syndrome. Now, at various points yeah. during their careers, uh, have you experienced that and how did you overcome it? I think I've probably experienced it throughout. So first of all, from a varsity perspective, um, I come from Limpopo. My family is not the wealthiest. My mother is a teacher. My father is a is a lecturer, and of course, they're breadwinners, which means that from a um, monetary perspective, our disposable income is not just for the immediate family, but the extended family as well. So when I got into the that lecture room and the lecturer said, "Look to your right, look to your left. Only one of you is going to be there," and to my left was someone from St. Stephen's, and to my right, St. Mary's or whatever it might be. With seven exemptions already you're thinking oh my gosh this is me who's not going to to be here because one there's not a lot of black people in that class two you come from a different background where you didn't have the same advantages and three the the the, the just being an actuary in its, in itself and trying to qualify is a very scary thing because they say only like top students are uh, make it. So with all of that, you develop that imposter syndrome. When you go into the workplace, you find that it's, you are the only female, for example, which means and you're the soft spoken one, which means either. And I remember when I when I first started working, somebody who used to work in the same company came to the actuary department and asked me if I was the secretary. I remember laughing it off, but then feeling very upset with myself. Because again, that emphasized that imposter syndrome. I think the fact that you can be in a meeting and you're trying to speak, but people are not giving you a chance to speak, you start feeling like you don't belong there. I think the fact that um, from a BBE perspective, um, companies are trying to get uh, black people and uh, previous disadvantage, and especially women, into that room. Sometimes you question yourself to say, are you here because of the numbers? Or are you here because you deserve to be there? So most of the proving yourself is very internal. And that's why it's quite critical that you have a mirror outside that glass reflection so that the people around you remind you of who you are and what your strengths are. Because if you rely on yourself, the working environment could easily derail you into thinking you do not belong. Memory Izimba, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show on this International Women's Day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, we'll take a quick break. Back in a moment.